Welcome to the Great Plains Association for College Admissions Counseling Virtual College Fair. We are so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Nashira and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of many different sessions happening. So be sure to check out the schedule on the website. This presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com forward slash G-P-A-C-A-C. I'd like to now turn it over to our first presenter, Missouri State University. Okay, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining our session. My name is Kirsty Hunter, and I'm an admission counselor at Missouri State University, and we'll go ahead and get started. So Missouri State is the home of the Bears, and we're located in Springfield, Missouri. We're down here in the southwest corner of the state. We're about a two and a half hour drive from the Kansas City area, about three hours from Tulsa, and about a four hour drive from the Wichita area. We have about 16,000 undergraduate students who study on our Springfield campus every year, but about 20,000 plus total students enrolled here, and we represent 49 of the 50 states as well as 74 countries worldwide. Missouri State is truly that perfect mix of a big school opportunity and a small school community. You'll always meet lots of people and have some new faces to see so it's never going to get stale while you're here but at the same time you also won't get lost or feel overwhelmed on campus and you're always going to have at least one person that you know in your classes. Our average class size is about 22 to 1 and you may even have classes with fewer than 10 other students in them as you get into those upper levels and as far as campus itself we are about 10 to 15 minute walk from corner to corner and that doesn't include our amazing downtown campus that we have for our fine arts students called Brick City. From an academic standpoint, we offer something for everyone. We have seven different academic colleges and over 170 different academic programs and pathways that you'll be able to choose from. Our largest programs tend to be in business, nursing, psychology, and education, but we have a lot of different unique programs as well, such as musical theater, dance, electronic arts, and fashion design and merchandising. We also offer 65 different certificate programs that are there to help you sharpen up your skills, whether that's in an interest like video production or web entrepreneurship. So no matter what, you'll have an academic experience that's focused on your unique interests, as well as focused on connecting you with professors and getting hands-on experience, whether that's through a practicum, an internship, a clinical experience, or a study abroad opportunity. And while supporting you academically is our primary goal, it is certainly not our only focus here at Missouri State. The college experience is all about the people that you'll meet and the friendships you make and the memories that you'll make while you're here. As an out-of-state student, you will have the luxury of choosing between eight different residence halls in a variety of styles. In addition to that, you'll also have an opportunity to preference a living learning community or an LLC. And these are to pair you with students of similar interests, whether that's a personal, professional, or a social interest. You'll also have access to over 375 different student organizations. That's everything from fraternity and sorority life to campus ministries to professional organizations, but the vast majority of those are student interest groups that our students have created, like our baking club called the Cupcakes. We also offer Division I NCAA athletics and over 65 different traditions that are super fun and happen all throughout the year, such as our Bear Bash and our Fountain Day, where well, you will get more free food and free bearware then you're going to know what to do with. So it will never be easier to find other people who share your passions and share your interests, and you'll make lifelong friends as soon as you get here to Missouri State. You'll also have the benefit of going to college in Springfield, which is Missouri's third largest city, and it has all the restaurants, hangouts, sports, entertainment and everything that comes along with being in a large city. But at the same time, because we are still in the heart of the Ozarks, there are so many awesome opportunities for getting out on the water, taking your bike out on a trail, going for a hike anytime that you want to. We're also very close to the Lake of the Ozarks, to Table Rock Lake, 
hike to the Ozark Mountains of Northern Arkansas. And those are really popular places for our students to take day trips as well. At Missouri State, we are proud to offer you a tremendous education at a truly amazing cost. And on top of our already low cost of attendance, you might also qualify for our out-of-state tuition waiver. So this automatically sets you up to pay in-state tuition, and it's a savings of just a little over $8,000 each year. So it's certainly something worth considering. You'll automatically be qualified for this waiver if you have one of the four following criteria. You rank in the top 50% of your class. You have at least a 3.25 GPA on a 4.0 scale. You have an ACT composite or super score of a 24 or higher, or you have an SAT score of 1160 or higher, and you would automatically qualify. In addition, we offer dozens of generous merit-based scholarships. Some of those are automatic and may require a test score, but we do have some that do not require test scores. We also have competitive scholarships that just opened up this month where you will submit a separate application for those. And that first deadline for those is December 1st. So just something to keep on your radar as well. And if this sounds good to you, your next step is going to be to apply to Missouri State. There is no application fee. Our application is very, very quick and simple. And you can apply at missouristate.edu slash apply or through the Common App. And if your cumulative high school GPA is at least a 3.25 on that 4.0 scale, you might also meet automatic admission without submitting a test score. But do know that test scores can benefit you when it comes to scholarship and other opportunities, so you're always welcome to submit a test score. Once your application is complete, you can expect an admission decision within about 10 to 15 business days of us getting all the items that we need from you. Finally, I just wanna wrap up by saying that we would absolutely love to hear from you and help with anything and everything in this college search process. You can email us anytime at admissions at missouristate.edu. You can set up an appointment with your admission rep, just like me at missouristate.edu slash contact rep. And we would love to see you for a campus visit if you're ever able to make it. So thank you all so much for your time and I hope you enjoy the rest of the session. Thank you, Missouri State University. Now we'll have Penn State University. Sure, give me just a second as I'm having some computer issues. Sorry, I apologize for this. My mouse is... All right, so as we await Penn State coming back. Uh, now. Sorry okay. about that. Okay. All right. Now I can share. There we go. Sorry about that. All right, so welcome everybody. My name is Anna Fernandez and I am the territory manager for your area. Uh, thank you for your time today to come learn all about uh, Penn State and all the other uh, wonderful universities. Um, Penn State, major university in the center of Pennsylvania. Um, we have 20 campuses um, across the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. We're continually ranked in the 1% of top universities across the world. Um, we also have a top ranked um, career service office um, that all of our academic colleges have and that provides student services, uh, providing internship opportunities, um, resume workshops, career advice, and really prepared students um, for those very important um, career fairs. We have an 85% graduation rate and a 93% uh, retention rate. And those both are numbers that we're really proud of. And they're both above the national average. Um, we have over 300 um, study abroad programs in 54 different countries. And because we're a research one university, we get significant funding to do research over a billion dollars um, every year. And there are research opportunities in most of our academic colleges and in all of our campuses. Now, even though Penn State is a large institution, our student to faculty ratio tends to be about 16 to one, especially when students um, are taking those um, um, core courses for their majors. Uh oh, my mouse is not doing this again. Oh. 
Okay, there we go. We have over 275 majors and 185 minors. And at Penn State, for the most part, uh, students are going to come in in a pre-major status while they take their general ed and entrance to major courses. So that gives them a lot of flexibility to change their mind if they want to. Um, about 75% of students do. We have the Division of Undergraduate Studies that we call our exploratory for the students who are undecided and they work closely with an academic advisor um, for those first two years to explore different areas until they finally choose a major. At Penn State, um, we think it's really important to get involved outside the classroom and um, expand your circle of friends. We have over 1,200 clubs and activities across all of our campuses um, that are social. We have sororities, fraternities. Uh, we have organizations and everything you can imagine and unique clubs. And if you can't uh, find one that you're interested in, you can create one at Penn State. All you need is 10 interested students and a faculty member to sponsor you. And you can create your own club at Penn State. And these are great ways um, not only to get involved outside of the classroom, but also start building your resume early in your college career. Um, what's unique about Penn State is that we are one university. Um, but we're part of a 20 campus system. And you can see all of our campuses there across the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Um, all of our campuses um, are Penn State, um, so you can get a four-year degree there should you choose to, or you can take part of what we call a two plus two plan, where students can begin their uh, program for the first two years at one of our Commonwealth campuses, and then transition over for their last two years um, at another campus, or usually our University Park campus, which is our largest campus right there in the center. All of the campuses um, range in size from about 500 to about 5,000 students. Um, as you can see, some of them have little houses. Those houses represent on-campus housing. The red represents um, students are required to live on campus on both a university park and our Barron campus. Um, so these are some of the unique things that we have here at Penn State. Now to talk about the admissions process, there's three ways you can apply using the coalition app, your, my, the common app and our standalone application at admissions.psu.edu. Um, once you submit your application, you'll receive an email with a link to create your My Penn State profile. Um, once you do that, you're going to take your transcript and you're going to input all of your courses and grades from 9 to 11 and your 12th grade um, courses into what we call the self-reported academic record. You will have already done this in the Common App, but it doesn't transition over, so you'll have to do it again in our form. Then you're going to answer a yes or no question of whether or not you want your test course included in the evaluation process because Penn State is going to be test optional um, through the fall of 2023. Once you have completed all of these steps, your application to Penn State is going to be complete. And your Penn State profile is going to be very important. That's going to be where we're going to communicate with you. And it's also going to be where you're going to receive your decision um, even before you receive it in the mail. Um, to estimate your eligibility, eligibility to attend Penn State. Um, here's the academic breakdown of the students who were accepted last year and the current first year students. Um, we don't have a minimum GPA or standardized test scores for admission. This is merely the mid 50% of students who were admitted last year. Um, so if you see yourself within these ranges, you can feel confident about your chances to be admitted to your first choice campus. Uh, and if you're not, that's okay too. You just might wanna think about being a little bit more flexible and starting in summer as an option or maybe in one of our Commonwealth campuses um, with our two plus two plan. In the end, at Penn State, the bulk of the admissions decision is going to be a result of your academic preparation in high school, including your grade point average and your um, rigor of your curriculum. And I'm gonna skip because I know time is coming up. These are, um, to estimate your cost of attendance, here are tuition rates, which are set every July by our Board of Trustees. Um, as you can see, there's significant savings by starting at a Commonwealth campus with our two plus two plan. And here are my email and our social media pages. And I wanna thank you all for coming today. I'm sorry for the technical difficulties, but if you have any additional questions, um, please email me. I'm here to help you and guide you through this whole admission process. Um, so please email me and I'll be here to help you. Thank you, Penn State University. We'll now have Stevens Institute of Technology. All right, everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, my name is Miranda Malakis. I am 
one of the admissions counselors from Stevens Institute of Technology. Uh, Stevens is located in Hoboken, New Jersey. We are a technological research university. Our undergraduate population is around 3,700 students. So we are a smaller size institution uh, with about a 12 to one student to faculty ratio and an average class size of about 25 students. So you will get that one-on-one -on -one attention from your student, from your professors and be able to collaborate with other students in your courses. Uh, we were founded in 1870 by the Stevens family. Uh, they were a family of engineers and entrepreneurs. And our first major here was actually mechanical engineering, still one of our most popular majors to date. Uh, research is at the forefront of our education here. So all students will be doing some kind of research while on campus with a lot of other undergraduate research opportunities available. Uh, something we like to pride ourselves on is our return on investment for our students. So the average starting salary for a graduate coming out of Stevens was around $77,000 for the class of 2020, and we are super proud of that cohort of students. Uh, so we've got about 34 different programs of study here at Stevens, all STEM-based uh, majors for the most part coming out of our schools of science business, humanities and the arts, and our two most popular, computer science and engineering. Uh, like I said, one of our most popular majors is still mechanical engineering with computer science being a close second. As life as a Stevens duck. So we do have about 50 plus different student performances each year within the performing arts. So you might not necessarily think arts at the at the STEM school, but the arts are alive and well here. Um, our oldest club is our Glee Club and it actually is still kicking and alive here. So it's exciting. Uh, we've got a hundred plus different student organizations. So we really do have a club for everyone and every interest. Uh, 25 different athletic teams. Uh, we are division three school. Uh, we have different annual events and traditions like our Tech Fest, which is a concert as pictured here that we throw for the students each year. Um, and something I'm super proud of, we've got 15,000 hours of community service on campus each year. Our location, so we're located in Hoboken, New Jersey. Um, up here is an aerial shot of campus. We are right across the river from Manhattan. Uh, so it's a really great opportunity for students to have kind of the world at their fingertips with amazing career opportunities right over Manhattan with um, probably any company an engineer wants to work for uh, right at your fingertips. Uh, we do have a more traditional looking campus, however, even though we are located in the city, we still got the greenery and the lawns and a more traditional looking campus. Uh, we are, we do have some on campus housing options as well, with more coming. These two new towers pictured here are going to be new dorm options for the students as well. Um, Hoboken is ranked best, sixth best college town among the Princeton Review. It's a really fun and exciting place to be. Uh, something else that we pride ourselves on here at Stevens is our opportunity for professional practice. So students do have the opportunity to start professional practice right within their freshman year. Um, we've got internship opportunities, about 40% of our students will take part in a co-op program allowing you to do real work real life work within your uh, program of study, uh, research opportunities with all of our PhD holding professors actively doing research on campus, as well as study abroad. We have an extensive office there. Uh, just some highlights from the class of 2020. Uh, we were ranked 17th in the nation, return on investment. About 95% of our students found placement within six months of graduation, whether that was in graduate school, a career, or within the military. Uh, and we were ranked um, 11th best in the nation on career placement. So students getting the jobs that they went to school for. Um, and now the application process. So we are an early decision school, so that is a binding decision option. We've got two rounds of early decision, uh, first being November 15th deadline, second January 15th deadline, as well as a regular decision deadline of January 15th. Um, exciting for the fall 2022, we are going test optional. Um, so you do have the option to submit those SAT scores if you would like to. Uh, all we're looking for is your application with an essay. Uh, we are a member of the Commons app so you can fill that out. Send over your official transcripts, um, at least two letters of recommendation as well. Um, and if you are interested in applying for financial aid, we do um, suggest you do both the FAFSA and CSS profile roughly around the same time you apply for admission. 
Um, all students are automatically reviewed for merit-based academic scholarships uh, just by applying to Stevens. So if you fill out an application, you're going to be reviewed for um, scholarships and you'll find out which merit scholarships you received within your acceptance letter. All right, so that's all I've got. Thank you so much. Uh, hopefully we see you up in the Northeast a little bit. Here's my contact info if anyone does have any follow-up questions and hope to see you here at Stevens very soon. Thank you so much, Stevens Institute of Technology. We'll now have Marist College join us. Great, thank you so much. So thanks everyone for joining today. My name is Kate Bazinski. I'm the Senior Associate Director of Admission at Marist College, which is located in Poughkeepsie, New York. And so I'll start by showing you a little bit about our campus. This is an aerial view of, um, of our campus located right on the Hudson River. So Poughkeepsie is about 90 minutes north of New York City and about 90 minutes south of Albany, our state capital. So we have really convenient access to two major cities, but at the same time, we are located in the heart of the Hudson Valley, um, which is a really beautiful region. And as you can see, we have a really uh, beautiful traditional college campus with lots of green spaces and river views. So I think in terms of our location, we have the best of both worlds. So our students really benefit from having that nice community feel on our campus, but at the same time, um, you know, can be in the city in 90 minutes for an internship or, or just for the day with friends. Here's a little bit about Marist um, at a glance. We are a small to medium sized campus with about 5,000 undergraduate students. So when you compare us to other institutions, um, we're pretty solidly medium sized. Um, it allows us to have small class sizes. The average class size that we have is about 20 to 25 students. And the largest class size that we have is 35. So there's no lecture halls, no auditorium style classes. You really get to know your professors as well as the other students in the class. We are a liberal arts college with over 40 majors. I'll talk more about those in just a moment. Um, but I think something important to know is that at Marist, you don't have to come in with a major. Um, you can be undeclared for up to two years. So the beauty of liberal arts is that you have the opportunity to explore and try different things if you're not 100% sure what you want to study. Um, if you do, that's great, but we definitely encourage um, you know, crossing over into different academic areas and, and trying out a few different things uh, maybe before you, you select your major. Um, if you, if you have multiple interests. We do have a pretty solid student to faculty ratio of 16 to one. Um, and we also have students finding us from all over. So there's 44 states and 58 countries represented in the Marist population. So we are a pretty diverse campus. Um, and then in terms of our student outcomes, um, our students are, are finding employment or graduate school placement or going on to PhD programs, something productive um, within six months of leaving us. And that's nearly 100%. Um, and they're graduating at a really efficient pace. In terms of majors, this is the full list. Um, it's also on our website if you need to refer back. But as you can see, there's quite a variety. We are liberal arts, like I said. So we have traditional liberal arts majors in English and history and um, political science. But we also have more industry-focused majors too, like communications, and business, um, computer science and technology, cybersecurity as well is pretty new. Um, and then fashion design and merchandising are also quite popular. So um, really whatever you're looking for, we, we probably have something like it. Um, and I think the, the kind of unique thing that some of our more popular programs are in the industry focused areas um, and being in a liberal arts college is kind of cool. Um, so regardless of what you study, you graduate with a really well-rounded understanding of a lot of different things, um, but you really have a strong understanding of your major. Um, and I think that's really valuable regardless of what you'd like to study. All of these majors are mostly also minors. So you can uh, very, very likely pair up a, a few different things if you'd like. It's very common for students to have a major and a minor. But regardless of what you study, you will have some sort of hands-on opportunity while you're at the college. Um, and I think that's kind of our hallmark, um, the hallmark of our academic philosophy is that you will learn by doing in some way. Um, that could be an internship, it could be research, it could be student teaching. Um, and our students are having these opportunities both on campus and off campus in our local area, in New York City, abroad. So um, 
really the bottom line is if you're a person who likes to learn in a hands-on environment and really have like experiential opportunities, then we can certainly provide that to you. Um, a few internships that I wanna point out, these are some of our key internship programs. Um, specifically, the one I wanna talk about is in the center here, Marist in Manhattan. Um, this is a residential semester long program where you can live in New York City for one full semester, like a study away and do a full-time internship. So it's great if you want to study something like communications or fashion or business, um, but is open to all majors. So that's something that I think is really unique and can give you that city experience if you want it just for a little bit, um, but then have a traditional campus life otherwise. Study abroad is also really significant at Marist. We were ranked third in the country for study abroad programs. And we have over 70 destinations around the world where you can choose from. And about half of our students will study abroad. The most popular location for our students to go is Florence, Italy, because we actually do have our very own campus there. Um, so students are, are finding that to be um, really convenient because it's Marist classes. We also have a very thriving student life with over 80 clubs and activities. We are division one for athletics as well. So um, there's definitely an element of school spirit on campus and students are very, very eager to get involved um, regardless of what that means for them. And part of that is, is living on campus. Most of our students live on campus for all four years um, and nearly 100% live on campus for the first year. So there really is that true living learning community um, at Marist. Just quickly about the application process. It's pretty straightforward. We do have an early decision as well as an early action deadline. Um, they're both November 15th. And then later in the year, we have an ED2 as well as regular decision. We encourage you to choose whatever is best for you. We do not have a preference. We're on the common application. And you can see here a little bit about um, the type of student we typically admit, um, keeping in mind we are test optional. We also welcome you to visit us um, at any point. If you're going to be in the Northeast, we are open seven days a week for in-person visits, but we also have a ton of virtual programs. Um, and then you can always just feel free to reach out as well if you have any questions. Um, I'm always here to help. So thank you so much. Thank you, Mayor's College. We'll now have Kansas State University join us. Hello. Let me uh, make my screen a little bit bigger. All right, uh, thank you for your patience. I'm so uh, happy to be able to present to you today. Uh, my name is Brian Williams. I am the Assistant Director for College Access uh, for Kansas State University. I'm very excited to talk to you about uh, my favorite university uh, to exist. Uh, I've received uh, two degrees from K-State, uh, both a bachelor's and a master's program, and I've loved um, every moment of my experience working with K-State, so much so that I want to bring as many uh, future K-Staters to the campus as possible. So I have a few slides I want to run through with you really quickly and uh, definitely be taking questions um, in the chat. So first to start off with, um, we are located in Manhattan, Kansas, uh, a quintessential college town. Uh, our student population is 22,000 students. The, uh, the town population is 50,000. So um, as you can expect, um, there's the, the culture of the town really revolves around Kansas State University, which is it's a really neat place to be where um, everybody's bleeding purple, everybody's at the football games, everybody is excited during homecoming and the beginning of the semester. Um, that's probably why uh, we're ranked number one right now um, by the Princeton Review for having the happiest students. The Princeton Review is a, is a survey that's given to students. So these are students telling us um, that they're really excited um, and, and happy with their experience at K-State. Um, our student to faculty ratio is 18 to one. Um, so you're gonna have a chance to know your professors and be able to uh, create some relationships some deep relationships with your professors that will lead uh, to uh, connections to your future career. Um, probably why 
why also we have the highest starting salary within our state for graduates and a 95% placement um, after graduation. Uh, that was the, the numbers we pulled for this last year. And so that's in the middle of the pandemic, 95%. We're pretty proud about where we are um, with that. So when you come to Kansas State, um, you're going to be able to uh, discover and explore a variety of majors. We have over 250 uh, majors and programs to choose from between um, our nine academic uh, colleges, eight of those being um, undergraduate colleges, uh, College of Agriculture, Architecture, Playing Design, Arts and Sciences, Business, Education, Engineering, Health and Human Sciences, and our aviation campus that's located in Salina. Um, some of the hallmarks of our programs is we want, really want to make sure the students are being able to um, apply their learning outside the classroom so students can get involved with undergraduate research as early as their freshman year. Uh, we have a bevy of opportunities for students. We um, uh, yearly rank in terms of the top um, scholars, rece scholars recipients from the Rhodes to the Trumans to the Marshalls and so forth. Um, that's because we have such a robust undergraduate research program at K-State. Um, lots of ways to practice your leadership. You have over 500 uh, organizations to choose from, um, things that you might be involved in now in high school, like our Student Government Association, which would be uh, like your student council at high school. Uh, really big decisions being made there. $18 million budget those students are over. So they're, they're, they're making some pretty important decisions for our university's future and our present. We also have one of the largest leadership studies programs in the country as well. So we're going to make sure that you're getting those skills outside the classroom that's going to connect you to career, but also help you to discover um, who you are, and who you want to become as a leader, um, as a citizen, um, as, a, as a person. Uh, nuts and bolts, just remember December 1st, December 1st for everything for us. We have our um, scholarship application that's due December 1st. Um, that's going to uh, uh, make you eligible for um, our tuition waivers, our scholarship programs, um, and so forth. Uh, we um, are looking, first I'm sorry with admissions, I'm sorry, admissions, uh, uh, is not is rolling admissions, so you can apply whenever you like, but the scholarships are connected to your GPA um, and your ACT that you put on the admissions application. So if you complete your admissions application by December 1st, you'll be good to go uh, for scholarship consideration. Uh, we also have a pathway for scholarship review without looking at an ACT or SAT test score. It's a supplemental application that we're going to look at your, your involvement in high school, your community service, um, part-time jobs, any type of leadership that you're, that you're uh, giving your community or giving your your school or given um, all the way up to the country. We have, we have students who come to K-State who have uh, uh, national positions in certain organizations. So we, want, we want to know about those things. And if you fill out that application, we will consider you for um, scholarships without the ACT score or the SAT score. Uh, December 1st is also our priority deadline for our financial aid application, the FAFSA, the free application for federal student aid. Um, it's going to be how you're going to be eligible for grants, loans, and work study. It's our priority uh, deadline because we have some limited funded grants. Um, you can fill out the fast for whenever, of course, but you'll for your best offer, you want to get that in by December 1st. Um, finally, I'd be, I want to talk about the K-State Scholarship Network. This is another application she'll complete in February, and this is where your academic major will give you the uh, the uh, 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 scholarship consideration as well. Um, to get into the university, 325 GPA is all you need. Um, if you are not able to get 325, if you have a 21 ACT or a 1060 SAT, that will get you in um, as well. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, contact me at your earliest convenience, K-State 12, um, or you can um, hit me up on Calendly. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Kansas State University. We'll now have William Woods University join us. All right, good afternoon, everyone. 
My name is Spencer Burke. I'm an admissions counselor with William Woods University in Fulton, Missouri. To give you an idea of where Fulton is located, we're 25 miles east of Columbia, just off Interstate 70. We're 25 miles north of Jefferson City. We're about 100 miles from St. Louis and 150 miles from downtown Kansas City. So we're in a very ideal location in Missouri. Fulton also has the Missouri School for the Deaf. It's a small community of about 13,000. We have the historic brick district, which is within a five minute walk of our campus. A little bit about our university. We have around a thousand undergraduate students, including our online part-time and graduate programs. Our total enrollment is just over 2000. We have a 13 to one student to faculty ratio with an average class size of 13 students. We have 54 clubs and organizations at the university. We're a private liberal arts program. We offer over 60 majors, including equestrian science, American Sign Language, business, education, and biology. In addition to our majors, we also offer 26 minors. And our students reside from 35 states and 18 countries, so we have a great mix of culture and diversity on campus. Some unique opportunities that William Woods provides. We have Woods Around the World, where a student can study abroad for two weeks during the school year. Over the years, we've sent students to all seven continents, and we even sent a group to Antarctica in 2017. We have a Director of Career Services on campus. Her name is Amy Dittmer. She helps students with finding internships, jobs, with putting together their cover letter, resume, and if they'd like to do a mock interview. We offer Freshman Advantage, which is a three-week program in June where a student can earn up to seven college credits coming into their freshman year. So it gives them a little bit of a head start as far as beginning the college process. We do offer plus one programs in business administration and also in education. William Woods has 16 men's and women's athletic programs. We are NAI Division I. 43% of our undergraduate students are student athletes. William Woods has four sororities and three fraternities. It's a great way to get involved not only on campus, but also in the community as well. Over the years, about 40% of our undergraduate students are involved in Greek life. William Woods offers 54 different clubs and organizations, including Hands Up, which is a program for American Sign Language. We have Collegiate DECA as part of our business program. Our chapter, we were named the National Chapter of the Year for the fifth consecutive year this year, and we've been the only college university in the country that has received that honor. We have four equestrian clubs on campus, Western, dressage, hunter jumper, and saddle seat. We also have FCA, which is Fellowship of Christian Athletes. As part of the, as part of the application process, the student can fill out the application on our website, which is free of charge. We're also part of the Common App. Seniors coming up here in less than two weeks, the FAFSA is gonna become available October 1st. Keep that date in mind. Our school code is 002525. We'll count the FAFSA as your application as well. You'll want to be sure to submit your, submit your transcript with completed grades through the end of your junior year. You can submit your test scores, whether ACT and or SAT, but we are test optional for 2022. You'll want to be sure to review your acceptance and financial aid letters and secure your scholarships by submitting the tuition deposit. That way we can begin the process of getting you registered for classes, reserve you a spot for on-campus housing, and finalize your financial aid. And then finally, August move-in, which classes for next year are scheduled to start on Monday, August 22nd. The LEAD program, what this entails, it's a $5,000 per year scholarship that a student receives for getting involved with different activities on campus. So by attending or participating in home athletic events, theater performances, art exhibits, 
horse shows, Greek life, guest speakers, that sort of thing. 100% of our students receive financial aid. Our scholarships start at 12,500 per year. We added a diversity and inclusion scholarship this year, which the maximum amount a student could receive for that is $2,500. And that is renewable each year. We also have an honors program award of $1,000 per year. That's for 16 students that get accepted in the program with a minimum 3.2 cumulative GPA and either a 26 ACT or 1230 SAT. Athletic scholarships are determined by the coaches and academic and athletic scholarships are stackable up to the cost of tuition. We require a minimum 2.5 cumulative GPA and are test optional. We're on enrolling admissions basis, so we accept applications all the way up until the first day of classes. There's my contact information. If you have any questions about William Woods University, we'd love to see you on campus. Thank you for taking the time to listen and enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Thank you so much, William Woods University. So at this time, I'd like to invite everyone to um, turn on their mics and their, well, on their, turn on their videos. Um, and then we're gonna have a small Q&A session. So my first question will go to uh, Missouri State University. What advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Great question. This is always one of my favorites. I just really encourage my students to take this time to be selfish. This is your decision that you're going to make. So regardless of what your friends want you to do, what your parents want you to do, this is all about you as a student. And coming to sessions like these is a great way to start just to get a feel for what's out there and start to question, what program do I want to study? And does this school have to offer it? Um, what do I want to get involved with? And what school might have that? So just be selfish with your time and your exploration and make sure that you're finding the best fit for you. Thank you. Penn State University, what's one thing you want students to remember about your school? Um, that we are one university, but we have a 20 campus uh, system. So if you want a Penn State education, but you want it at a smaller campus, we have that opportunity for you. If you want a Penn State education, but you want it near a large, uh, a large metropolitan area, we have that for you as well, because we have campuses around Philadelphia, um, Pittsburgh, and some that are near New York City as well. And all of these campuses have their own four-year degree because they're all Penn State. So no matter where you start and where you finish, it is going to be one degree, one university, one transcript. Thank you. Stevens Institute of Technology, what is one myth you'd like to debunk on the college admissions process? Um, so I think the biggest one this year, um, and probably the rest of you guys can attest to, is the test optional um, policy that a lot of our schools have implemented. A lot of students are being really hesitant and a little nervous. Do I really need to submit my SAT scores? Is it? Go are you guys going to look at me differently? We're really not. When we say you have the option to submit your test scores, we really mean you have the option. Um, I always tell students that their college application is just supposed to make them shine. So if your test scores don't make you shine, you you might want to consider leaving them off and it won't be any strikes against you. So I think that's a, a recent myth that's come about, but definitely um, something students are a little nervous about. And I promise you don't have to submit those scores if you don't want to. Thank you. Marist College, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Sure. So um, I would say that um, pre-COVID, uh, one of the biggest ways that you could engage with colleges is by visiting. Um, and we all pivoted to a virtual environment uh, when that happened. And uh, for many of us, um, even though we're back in person and having on-campus visits, I don't think the virtual stuff is going away. So if you are far away from a campus and you still want to engage with that school, well, the good news is now you can um, without having to take a flight or whatever. Um, so I think that you should take advantage of all the ways that we tried to bring the information to you during COVID um, because it still is really helpful at this point too. Um, and my other quick piece of advice is just to, uh, it sounds silly, but like write everything down. If you do visit a campus or if you do a virtual session, um, you know, make some notes about what made you feel good. What were some hesitations that you had because everything's gonna blend together after a while um, and you wanna keep your stuff straight. So um, those are my two pieces of advice. Thank you. 
Uh, Kansas State University, what's one thing you want students to remember about your school? Uh, sure, um, that uh, I will say that, that a lot of it's about when you're picking your college is about fit. Um, all these universities that are on on here are, are, are pretty exceptional if you've seen the, the presentation. So um, I think that uh, I would say that K-State is um, um, deeply invested in the student experience. Um, we want to make sure no matter what your major is, uh, no matter what your interests are, that you come to the university and you have a positive challenging experience academically that's going to make you uh, strong and a critical thinker but most most of all uh, prepare you for the outside world so if you're looking for a place that's going to um, um, get you connected to a career that's going to going to stretch you with your leadership uh, k-state's the place for you thank you and william woods university what is one myth you'd like to debunk on the college admissions process so this was this was answered earlier, but I would also I would also answer that on the as far as the test optional route. And like I mentioned, we are test optional for 2022. So if you don't have the best test scores, you don't have to submit them. But I always encourage students to do so. It could mean some additional scholarship opportunity for them, depending on what their composite score or super score comes out to be. Thank you. So I would like to thank everyone for joining us. Um, when you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick five question survey. We'd appreciate your feedback um, that you will provide and we encourage you to check back on the schedule and sign up for more sessions. Uh, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all the other session recordings at strivescan.com forward slash G-P-A-C-A-C. -A -A thank you. Have a great day.